I'm Katie Cowan and this is the Creative Boom Podcast. For episode 72, our last of the season, we're chatting with Vanessa Scott, a Manchester-based prolific public artist and a specialist in creative education. I first met Vanessa at a conference in Manchester in late 2019. Dressed in a bright yellow jumpsuit and wearing a huge smile, she was a friendly, positive force that you just couldn't ignore. And as I got to know her and her work, it became clear that this was someone who wasn't going to let anything hold her back. In the years that followed, Vanessa's reputation and artistic practice deservedly grew, leading to a Blue Peter badge that she designed herself and introduced live on the popular BBC children's programme, I swear, I'm not jealous, I promise. As well as creating one of the UK's tallest murals, celebrating the pioneering work of Sylvia Pankhurst. Vanessa's won awards, become a great Mancunian, which is a local project by Manchester College to celebrate people who have had a significant cultural and creative impact on the city of Manchester and its surrounding areas. And she was appointed as an official ambassador for the Pankhurst Centre. But despite all of this success... Vanessa was going through unimaginable suffering and loss behind the scenes. The last couple of years have indeed been very difficult. Even for this podcast, she turned up to my house with news of further sadness. But there, as always, with a huge smile on her face and that infectious laughter, a warmth and determination to stay strong, be positive and march on. It's this strength that perhaps comes from having a very strong family unit and a local community that she often taps into and finds incredibly supportive. It's perhaps why Vanessa dedicates so much of her time to help others, as she and her sister also run 731, a non-profit organisation that uses creativity to further the education and skills of serving prisoners, ex-offenders and disengaged young people. Here, Vanessa chats about finding her voice, despite the sexism or racism she has sadly sometimes endured. About not having a seat at that mythical table, and why it's important to build our own, welcoming everyone else to join us. We hear why it took Vanessa a while to declare herself an artist, and we talk of colour, pattern, doing what we love, having confidence, speaking up, speaking out, and why great things can happen if we let down our armour, be ourselves, and embrace all the joyful, wonderful things that make us so unique and special. But first, a word from our sponsor. Capture One creates world-class tools for editing, organising and working with photos. A leading innovator, Capture One strives to meet the needs of visual creators everywhere. Go to captureone.com to find out more. But now, here's my chat with Vanessa. Here we are. <laughs> it's taken a while, hasn't it? Yes, Gosh. <laughs> it actually has. God, because when we first met, was it at Design Manchester, what, in 2019? 2019, yes. You were this shining, you know, aura in a bright <laughs> yellow jumpsuit and just Always. with this massive smile. And so just immediately made me feel at ease and came up to me and said hello. Because I, th- I remember being at that conference and, and feeling really shy and awkward and bumbling about and not really? really knowing anyone. So you were kind of, you stood out to me and have ever since because yeah. you just just so lovely and warm and Thank you. I was like oh somebody nice oh no you were great I was like oh check her out <laughs> check her out check her out doing a podcast yes yes, yes. <laughs> you're a dark horse though go on <laughs> I was like, because I've been trying to get this, but how many times have we tried to do this I, podcast? I literally think it must be about five times. <laughs> I think it is. I mean, I'm trying to make light of the situation. It's not been easy for you over the last couple of years. You, no. ha- you have probably been one of the most unlucky people <clears throat> uh, that I that I know, mm-hmm. really. Um, so I feel honoured that you're sat here now in my Thank dining you. room. Yeah, it's um, a lovely dining room. And I was hoping everything was okay now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so now I feel bad that I've invited you here and uh, oh gosh. Do you know it's it's a roller coaster and I, I say to people there's so many wonderful things that I'm so thankful for but there are some really challenging emotional things as well. Yeah. And it's just like okay. All right. Yes. But um you know I just I I keep going and I'm just so thankful for the good and I think we can always learn through the challenges but 
it definitely hasn't been easy. It definitely has been a lot of heartbreak and a lot of loss, mm. you know, but I still, you know, have my parents, my sister, my brother, you know, so there's so much I do have and that's what I'm really thankful for. But yeah, it has not been easy at all. No, no. like, I, I, you know, we won't go into too much detail about what you've been through personally, but it is just one thing after the other. And <laughs> I'm just like, hang on a minute, <laughs> this girl does stuff for charity, you know. <laughs> She's like giving back constantly. She's got a non-profit that helps others, you know, come on. Like if you're going to pick on someone, at least like think about somebody like, I don't know, somebody maybe with blonde hair and a bad haircut. <laughs> I love that. That's the measure. I'll make sure I don't ever go blonde then, right? Oh, but oh, I'm, glad, I'm glad your brother's okay. He um, is, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm really thankful. He's good. He's out of hospital and he's, he's getting better. Oh, yes, thank, he is. Thank God. Thank I mean, heavens for that. I think... I mean, you've had it particularly bad. A lot of people, myself included, have been very lucky. Mm. Um, we, you know, touch wood. Um, you know, we it really has just been okay. A little bit of inconvenience and a, mm-hmm. and a slight change in lifestyle, but yeah. really, we've we've just been so blessed, so lucky that nothing awful has happened. But um, now and again, you you know, you we're only human. It's our own perspective, isn't it? Yeah, you'll just feel absolutely overwhelmed by it all. Um, and it's in those moments that you might feel a bit guilty and go, oh, well, come on, you've not got it that bad, but it's just exhausting, isn't it, at the moment? I think it is exhausting, and I uh, worked all the way through all of the changes, so I don't, (laughs) there wasn't, and and I I feel like it's really interesting because it was like everyone was separated into these two camps where everything stopped, or everything went absolutely hyperspeed. Yeah. I was in the hyperspeed uh, category. <laughs> so it was very strange dealing with um, seeing the world change, seeing the fear in people, seeing the anxiety while still continuing. Yes. And it was like, whoa, well. Because your yeah. career, I mean, you've always been very successful, but your kind of career took off onto a kind of another level. A whole different it? level, yeah. Yeah. It was a very interesting time and it was like, okay, right. So there's lockdown, but there's all this out going out more. And it was strange going through town and it was just me on my push bike and uh, all the builders. So it was just like lots of people in high vis <laughs> and then me cycling to my next thing and cycling to the next thing. So it was a really, it was just very interesting kind of dynamic. And then just seeing everyone creep back out. But it was actually looking at how people coped I'm really empathic. Sometimes I feel like I need to dial it down. So I take on everyone's like, like I feel your anxiety. I feel this. And, you know, I was really feeling for people. And mm-hmm. that's where I think I needed to just chill out and not do that because that was making me more tired. So I was more worried for people. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I think when you give back a lot, you can forget yes. yourself, can't you? Yes. Yeah. hundred percent. So that, was that the biggest lesson of the last couple of years then for you? Did you sort of say, oh, actually, Vanessa, I need to remember me yes and it's so it's did did you know that how did you know that (laughs) no it's really true that's exactly what happened I thought right okay you know you need to maintain yourself as well you know you need to take a minute and just have those times where you just completely switch off and it's it's almost annoying for people because after a certain time in the evening, you really can't get me unless you know my magic landline number. Not many people have a landline. I still have one. It's like yes. the secret for Nessa. I love it. And, uh, so it's really <laughs> difficult to get me after a certain time because I just learned that I need to just switch off from everything. And that's even, you know, with social media, because social media is oh. a part of my, my, my job, if you will, a part of my everything that I do. So I don't really go on it socially. I go on it for like social work type thing. Yes. Uh, so I just switch off from everything. That That is something I wish I was better at doing because <laughs> it can cause a lot of anxiety and stress. Yeah. You, yeah. Could, you think you're okay and the next minute you go on and you look at something and it could it's be... It's not a, good. Yeah. Yeah. It could be anything. It could be a reminder of someone that slighted you once or yeah. it could be like um, somebody else's, you know, project that they've launched that is um, like, oh 100%. That's amazing. Oh. percent better. <laughs> And then you're like, do you know, for me, the worst thing, my worst thing is if I look at my phone or social media late at night, I start getting ideas. Yes. It's really bad. I'm like, mm, wow, okay. Mm, project idea. Mm, mural <laughs> idea. Mm, maybe we could. Mm, and that's really bad. So I, I can't. It doesn't take much to sort of start my cogs 
again, it takes me about two hours to wind down. Yeah. No joke. And if I did that, I'd have to wind down for another two hours. Yeah. I think so I have to stay away. Yeah. I think it's probably <laughs> wise knowing what you like in, in normal working hours yeah, as well, yeah. because just following you on Instagram, I get this sense of how like energetic you are, how mm-hmm. positive you are. You know, I saw this amazing clip of you today. You you were copying somebody else who works in the creative industries yes. where you're sort of, you know, dressed down, maybe not any makeup, I don't know. Yeah. And then you, you kind of show a work in progress of a mural on the wall. <laughs> and then you sort of wave your hand in front of the camera yeah. and then you're magically all done up and <laughs> still beautiful. And yeah, and the, and the mural's finished. I'm like... <sighs> why is fun. why is my life surround you know radio and writing I can't do any oh. of these wonderful things it's great it's nice it is really nice to be surrounded by color yeah. and really be able to lean into my love of color and yeah. pattern I was just like I love this so, yeah. so I literally got out of a very brightly colored car in a brightly colored jumpsuit <laughs> with bright colored ribbons in my hair I was like hey let's unveil a mural <laughs> <laughs> And it's nice to be able to do that, you know, like really just not even hold back. Oh, I love it. (laughs) I love that you dress really kind of bright as well and like really sort of enjoy, you know, expressing yourself in what you wear. Because like colour is something that I think a lot of us don't really dare, you know. I mean, you're in a lovely sort of tie dye black kind of outfit tonight you know but you did turn up in a in a pink car and yes. a white, white coat so we'll we'll let you off but I know this is like quite yeah demure demure yeah yes, on the earrings accents of gold beautiful thank you <laughs> is it a ridiculous question to ask if you have a favorite color <laughs> Do you know I laugh because it's like I have often get this question and the one I actually get is is your house like really bright no it's not it's filled with color but it's not bright color yeah. so my favorite colors are actually earth tones believe mm. it or not I love like uh um, amber colors and um russets and um, mustard and green and those are the colors I actually love slightly kind of African I would say maybe yeah they're kind of really rich warm earthy colours yes. and uh, you know if you looked out over a forest in in autumn this is my palette mixed with like bronzes and it's so stunning out there at the yes, moment yes gorgeous absolutely wonderful I keep taking pictures of my new trainers next <laughs> to all the leaves <laughs> you see <laughs> such an Instagram cliche right no but you have to do it because it's just so nice but th- those are my favourite kind of palette um, but I do I just love colour but I think if you're in my home, what you'd see is reds and greens and bronzes and reflective surfaces and black, some black. And wow. Yeah, deep colours, deep, that's, rich colours. That surprises me. And it surprises everyone because everyone thinks my house would be like really, really bright. But no. Yeah. No, it's colour is everywhere. Yes. Plants are everywhere. Oh, yes. How many have you got? And they're just like too many. <laughs> and I keep... <laughs> And I, as soon as I got this, um, seemed to have like quite, a, you know, a skill for propagation. So now I just keep growing more plants. Oh my goodness me. So I've got all these little bottles with little rooting and I love seeing the roots grow. So I've got all bottles along my kitchen windowsill of propagating plants. I just <laughs> love it. You know, I've got loads. You can you can give me some tips afterwards. I will. But I've got an app and I've got 18 plants listed on it. Oh. And it pings me and gives me little tasks to keep them watered, like, misted, cleaned. Missed, yeah, got to, got, got to miss them. Got them, got to miss them. Mm-hmm. But some, just lately, I've, I've, cause I'm like, it's, it's nearing Christmas and yes. I'm getting that kind of annual exhaustion, you know, <laughs> it's like, uh, and, and it pings me on my phone and says, it's been 33 days <gasps> since I'm like, oh Yeah, no. that's a long time. That's a long time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They're still alive. Thank heavens. Yeah, but that's long. <laughs> that is long. And I, <laughs> if I'm working away, I like um, extra water them, make sure they've got their food, change their water if they're propagating. <laughs> I do all of that. It takes ages. It really does. It's it, like a full-time job. It's like having a pet. No, it really is. Like when I was going away, like on a... <laughs> A girl's kind of, uh, we did a motorhome adventure. Oh, nice. And as we were like getting ready, I was like, will you do the back garden and I'll do upstairs. <laughs> will you do the living room? Great. And this was just the plants. This was not locking up. This was just getting the plants sorted. <laughs> oh, I love it. And were they all like really patient, your friends? Or were they like, what do I do again with yeah, this thing? I was like, make sure you put the hose on sprinkle. No, that's not enough water. Just, just do it again. That's it. That was me. I was, ah, there's a lot. I don't think I could count. I love it. It's a lot, yeah. You mentioned motorhome, magic word. Ah, yes. Where did you go? 
Oh my gosh. We went up to Scotland just before they shut it down again. That wasn't our fault. Okay. We didn't yeah, do anything. I can imagine it wasn't. <laughs> so we went to Loch Lomond and oh. it was just so fun. So there was four of us and a tiny little uh, toy poodle in a motorhome. <laughs> And we did some wild camping, you know, and you just park and just make it work. And then we found some campsites. We swam in the lock. And uh, yeah, safely though, because we're not that daring. It was kind of like up to waist and then, whoa, let's go back. That that was fun. Uh, Yeah, that was, yeah, out we go. (laughs) And it was really nice. It was fun. It was quite an adventure. It's amazing. The air feels like cleaner up that way. I love Scotland. Yeah. Like it almost hurts the back of your throat after being in Manchester, doesn't it? Yeah, I <laughs> when I came, I was like, oh, okay. Less mountains, but I still love you, Manchester. Yeah, yeah. I, this is a special <laughs> city. And you, you, do you grow up here? Is that right? No, I was ah. uh, born in Nottingham, actually. Ah. But I've been up here like over 20 years. So right. at, an actual born and bred Manc actually said to me, because they asked me a similar question. They were like, I was like, so am I, am I a Manc now? They were like, yeah. Definitely. I was like, well, now you've said it, it's official. And you were named a great Mancunian. I know. Yeah. Yay. So I was like, this is so cool. Because <laughs> yeah, my from sort of high school till now. So through all of that education and my working career has been up here. So yeah. Yeah. Great Mancunian. You've been That's adopted nice. by I this have. wonderful city. Yes. I but have. you went to university where well, you went to did you do a master's at Staffordshire University or was that an I did my degree? degree at Staffordshire, <gasps> yeah. See, that's yeah. my sort of home area where I grew up oh. and, and I went to Signal One. Um, yes. That was my first job. So I was just around the corner from the university. So I would often go, you know, and hang around um, after work, maybe go to the student bar yeah. with a friend or, um, but it was it was a nice university, Um you know, good courses. I think they've got a really good journalism course there as well. Yes. Yeah. I think the film journalism, really, really strong there. They had that lovely theatre, had great sandwich shop, which I had some really <laughs> calorific sandwiches in. But it was a, a really nice kind of small town feel, even though it's really quite a big place. Yes. And I enjoyed having the train station just right next to the uni. So you're just like, hey, I'm here. Yeah. And uh, it was nice. Yeah, I enjoyed and you the did, town. Well, you did graphic design there. But then you sort of left and you graduated and you went into radio initially. <laughs> so with the radio, that's always been. So my sister, we're really close sisters and she's almost like the other sphere of creativity. So her specialism is like film, TV, radio. Wow. Right. And then photography, that side. And then me, graphics, art on this side. Amazing. So we kind of, our skills complement each other. And she was obviously studying that and went straight into community radio. Right. So I joined her on many shows and then we had our own show. Uh, and then, yeah, it was called Get Vocal. And then... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. It was so fun and we recorded it and then we did radio dramas. We had the Foley artists going on. like And, yeah. and we literally never have never not been in radio in some way ever since. And that was a long time I got over, over, it's before my teaching career, so it's over 15 years. It's a long time. Yeah. Um, and then we did the online thing when online radio stations started being a thing, you know. And then it was North Manchester FM. We had yeah. a yeah. show on that. And then eventually we set up a, pretty, a prison radio station. Yes. Yeah. Which so. is part of your other venture, which we'll yes. come to, which, mm-hmm. is, which is incredible. And um, then, yeah, then recently I've been asked to be a trender on BBC Radio Manchester. Oh, wow. So that's super fun. I love that. What, what does that involve? <laughs> so being a trender, not an influencer, a trender. I think I prefer trender, right? <laughs> that's right. It's a less, less uh, crowded market. So, uh, <laughs> so being a trender <laughs> means basically you go on uh, on an existing show and you talk about topics of the day. So you're sent topics ahead of time. Yeah. And then any of those topics can come up. And then we just comment about those topics for what, like an hour. What like? What kind of stuff? Last time it was about, um, <laughs> it was about, I ended up talking about cheese and Christmas. Cheese. Then talking about politicians and some of the rules that were passed to get them off the hook. Do you remember that? Oh, there was yeah. all sorts going on, yeah. Naughty. Um, naughtiness. They're and on the naughty list. On the naughty list, They won't be sure. getting any cheese for Christmas. <laughs> Not a chance. And <laughs> definitely none of mine, thanks. No. I like cheese. And then... Um, just things like Christmas adverts. So I do not know what's going to be on the next conversation list. I get sent the the topics a day before. So 
Amazing. Yeah. And have you got like a favorite Christmas ad? Because we've just done a roundup of everything <gasps> this year and we keep oh. adding to it. Because have you seen the Coca-Cola one yet? As in the holidays are coming? No, it's they've done a different one. Oh, no, you can't do that. Oh, have they got rid of holidays. It's controversial, are isn't it? Oh, you can't get rid of that. Ah, uh, but wait until you see what they've done. Is it nice? Yeah. Okay. All right then. It's <sighs> lovely. It's about. Um, it's all set to like Mary Poppins, uh, Chim Chimery. Ooh, okay, that's a good Orchest- I, I, orchestral version. I see what they're doing. So basically, they want like a new holidays are coming, like for a sort of refresh it kind of thing. It's about a little boy um, oh. in a, an apartment in what might be New York City. Mm-hmm. And he's a bit sad and he's like thinking about Christmas. And then he decides to start making a chimney oh. because he realises they haven't got a chimney in their apartment. So he makes a <sighs> chimney out of cardboard boxes to like ensure that Santa brings a gift. And he starts making this. And yeah. all the way through this, I think it's like a 90 second spot. <laughs> um, all of the community in the building start coming together and helping him build it all the way up to the top. Okay, it's a win. It's won me over. It's so it's cute. It's won me over already. Like the community, everyone coming together. Yeah, it's a win. And it's like a reminder of, I suppose, last year, what we went through, how yes. we saw a lot of kindness and love. I mean, that's all gone now. It's gone back to... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was hoping that wouldn't happen. But the way people are driving at me when I'm driving, I think it's gone. <laughs> well, when they see you coming in the pink car, they're like, <laughs> they're like get, get out, out of the way. Yeah, yeah, literally. <laughs> pink is the colour of anger on the road. And is it? Like, oh, yeah. Get the pink car. It's like, oh, if my mum sat with me in the car and somebody has a go at us, my mum just still lean across and say something gentle. Like, I mean, she's turning into my nana oh. more and more every day. <laughs> just say something like, that. Sh- she's just found out she's got cancer. Oh, she, she is. <laughs> it's just awful. I'm like, mother, she'll kill me for saying that. Oh, that's funny. But it's her way of having empathy and compassion. Yes. Because it's that kind of old Christian kind of sentiment, yeah. isn't it? That um, you never know what um, hell other people are going through. It's very true. So yeah. it's good to have kindness and remember that that person who's shouting at you in the car oh. might have just had the worst day. That is, that's a really good approach. Because yes. sometimes it's very testing. You're like, it's okay, yeah. it's all right. Yeah, exactly. And it can be really testing sometimes. It's not always all positive um, in the creative industries. You know, it can be quite a struggle at times. You know, there's a lot of criticism on, mm-hmm. on you know, unwarranted um, uh, advice from from people. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's nice. <laughs> do, you, do you get that? Do you get people slide into your DMs, DMs and start with, just to let you know? Do you know, I've not had that. <laughs> and that's really interesting. I've not actually had the one of, oh, just so you know. I've had one troll who was very determined. <gasps> that was a Twitter troll. And I was like, wow. And my sister was like, you never feed the troll. I was like, okay, cool. Because I didn't understand what was oh. going on. I was like, oh, right. Wow, you really have a problem. You were with... trying to be nice, weren't you? Yeah, I was. And <laughs> she was like, no, never. Don't feed the trolls. Don't feed the trolls. Because I was like, oh, okay. So they're not trying to have a conversation. Nope. No. I was like, trapped. I thought you just wanted... <laughs> Like you needed somehow, or you needed a chat. No, they didn't. They're so, just yeah, angry. They were just angry. So yeah, they've just found out they've got a terrible terminal <laughs> disease. You know, <laughs> they were just, I thought, wow, okay, I really offend you. So yeah, that was quite interesting. It's quite amusing, isn't it, when we realise there are people out there who just who we annoy. Yes. <laughs> How can we annoy anyone? Yeah, you're like, what? How? We're so lovely. <laughs> we got a pink car. <laughs> I mean, for God's oh sake. Oh, gosh. Anyway, I mean, you know, we get we get through it. We, on strong days, which is most of the time, we just kind of mm-hmm. let it go over our heads, don't we? Yes. And mm-hmm. then when, when we're going through a bit of tiredness or we're a bit burnt, burnt out, yeah. I think it can get to us and, and then things can spiral quite quickly. And I go through that sometimes. Thankfully, it gets, you know, it's less frequent the older I get. Mm-hmm. When you, you know, inevitably go through those anxieties, how do you, what's your kind of thing that gets you out of that? Do you know, I'm just trying to think now of times where that can happen. It can be, like you say, at times of exhaustion. Mm. And my mindset is largely positive. So I do always just try and think, okay, that's tough, but look at this side. But I'm yes. trying to think of a time because I know that it's, it will happen but I don't know, I'm just wired that it doesn't stay with me. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely. And I don't want it, I don't want people to think that I never go through challenging times. I do. But 
it's just wired not to sit with me because I've found that it's not actually helpful to me and it just brings me back and just kind of weighs me down. So I'm just like, okay. Cause you know, I have had people be, you know, quite nasty. I've had people try and hold me back. And I think because I've had that through my career from uh, teaching right through, it's kind of a resilience built in me that there's really no point and there's no, it's not going to benefit me to just mm. dwell there. And one thing I was always taught growing up was you, growing up was you answer criticism with performance. So that's kind of hardwired in me. So it's like, okay, you're calling me this, you're saying this, you're slating me with all the language. So fine, whatever, I'll do this. So that mm. those kind of circumstances do happen probably more often than I I care to to dwell on, but because my my approach is answer criticism with performance, keep going forward, focus on on the the positives of you and what you can do, and on those people who actually have so many nice things to say about you. And yeah, that's what I choose because it's so easy to kind of just let the nastiness seep in, and you then forget that for that one person or two people or even group, whatever it is, there's so many people who value you. Yeah. And it's a thing, like, I feel like saying it now, it comes from when I was at school, it always used to annoy me how I might be working really hard, but then someone being really irritating would get all the attention. And I'd be like, I'm actually still struggling, even though I'm not being a pain in the bum, I still just want a bit of help with this. Yeah. And you wouldn't get any because you're not being horrendous. So that used to annoy me. I was like, do I have to be really annoying in order to get any kind of support or help through things? So I kind of think like, right, if you're going to be horrible, I'm not going to give you any attention. Yeah. I'm going to focus on the kind, nice, positive people instead, because yes. they aren't getting any thanks. Yes. No, you're absolutely <laughs> right. And it's a, it's a really timely reminder, actually, you know, because I think that school attitude carries on into adult life, yeah. sadly. Um, there was a designer that got in touch with me the other day because he saw something on Twitter that he didn't like. You know, I got a bit of kind of uh, grief <sighs> off, a, off, an, off a man, a male, male designer. Mm -hmm. And he sort of messaged me and said, it's, um, you know, it's school playground 2.0. And you just have to let it go over your head. And exactly. He just, he said he was terrified of um, bringing his two daughters into the world um, with what we have to deal with, which <laughs> ah, we won't yes. go into too exactly. much. Or we can, we can just lay it all bare, you know. It's it's just one of those things. But I always think, and it might be my ego talking, I think, look at what we've achieved irrespective of that. Yes, exactly. And that's what keeps me going. I keep thinking, well, hang on, I'm doing okay. Because if these are, if, if you're talking about nastiness being sexism, possibly mm -hmm. racism, yes. then, you know, I certainly have experienced sexism. And yeah, despite all of that, we, we conquer all. Exactly. And, and that is why I think I focus on that. Not because I've never had challenges, but because I often have challenges <laughs> yeah. and I'm not about to just dwell in those because I'd probably drown in them. And who's trying to do that? No, because it's not going to actually benefit me. It will actually just be good for the people who are trying to hold me back and push me down. Yes. You know what I mean? So I'm not really about that. No, I agree. And I, I, think, <laughs> I think it's really difficult, isn't it? Because if we call out the behavior as well, that's mm -hmm. just another way of them winning. Yes. I think if it holds, if it, if it can really suppress you, and I think it's suppressed because we're human, things will get to us and more things can get to you than you realize, I think. And yeah. so you take a pause and think, oh, I'm acting this way because this person was like this to me or this group of people was like that. And I've done a lot of that reflecting. And throughout my time in education, I had a lot of uh, organizational bullying, unfortunately, and that did impact how I would expect people to be. Like there was a time where I was more used to people being nasty than I was to people being nice. So then when people were nice, it was very strange for me. Yeah. And there was even a time where when things like, let's say most pointedly was when I did the the huge, huge 38 meter mural and everyone was going like crazy the over it. No, yeah, it. The world's tall, no, the UK's largest UK's mural. That's murals, amazing. Yeah. And when I did that, like uh, social media, all these things were just going crazy. And it was like message, 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 message. And I was so, I just couldn't look at them. I couldn't look at the positive things because it freaked me out because I wasn't used to 
that much positivity heading my way. It's overwhelming, it, isn't it? Yeah. I was like, they're like, what are people saying? I was like, I don't know. I'm not looking. <laughs> Well, maybe in a, in a subconscious way, you were just like, just in case there's a negative comment. Yeah, I think. Do you know what? I think I would have. I was okay for the negative. I literally think it was because I was not used to that positivity heading my way. And I, when I started to analyze that, I was like, okay, so we need to move forward. And someone is, is Pete actually, Pete Barber. He's a really skilled um, sign writer and painter. And he, I said, he said, uh, I think we were talking when we were high up on the mural. And I was like, oh, you know, I can't really talk about myself, you know, Pete. I just, I just don't like it. And he was like, right, well, you're just going to have to get over it. <laughs> and He's that, right. I, I quote that advice because it really did help because it's like, you're going to have to get over it, Vanessa. Just get over it now. Yeah. People want when to hear what you've got to say. When was this? Was this like a couple of years ago before the pandemic? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because since just then, I've seen you sort of, you, your about page is more confident. Yes, you know, yeah. so is mine. <laughs> So there's a few other people that we know mutually. Exactly. I feel like the last couple of years, we've all been, you know, in our lovely little kind of network, just finding our voices. And, exactly. And gaining that confidence and going, oh, actually, I deserve a seat at the table. There we go. Just as much as anyone else. But I'm still tiptoeing. <laughs> See, I'm less tiptoeing now. I'm less. I'll just hang around with yeah, you. Yeah, I'm less tiptoeing. I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah. Just do it. <laughs> I think when I first started my career in PR, I was a bit more bolshy and I used to walk into a room and have to deal with um, a table full of uh, men who were twice my age mm -hmm. and hated PR and possibly <laughs> hated women. And I would sort of be in sky high heels, red lipstick, you know, <gasps> God, it was. Yeah, oh, I love the um, way you're going. I've got something to say about that. Oh, go really? On. Yeah, go on, go on. And they'd go, and one of them, before I even sat down at this boardroom table, and there was about 10 of them sat around it, all looking at me cynically. I was like, only 20, 27, 28. Mm -hmm. um, and one of them went, so what's this all about then? I don't, I don't really believe in PR anyway. And I just threw my notebook really hard on the table and went, all right, boys, should we, uh, should we begin? <laughs> <laughs> and I love that girl. And that girl got a bit lost along the way over the last however mm -hmm. many years because we just get ground down. Yeah. And people, we don't talk about it. We don't shout out. We don't call out behavior. I, I mean, I had a bit of a crash last week because it just got so, it got too much. Mm -hmm. And I was so tempted to just scream something out on Twitter. For God's sake, <laughs> goodness sake, sorry, <laughs> Nana. For goodness sake, will you please just leave me alone? You know, yes. what is your problem? Why are you kind of constantly targeting me? I am just running a lovely little platform that helps creatives who aren't necessarily big names. And, mm -hmm. you know, what am I actually doing? I'm not going around murdering kittens. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I reference your story a lot with that because I know you get a lot of hate for what you do. And it's quite ridiculous to be fair. I don't fair. understand it. It's ridiculous. And I, I do reference your story and, and some of the things that you had to go through, especially like around Black Lives Matter and everything like that. So I yeah. do reference that because it's wild, but hearing you talk about the skyscraper heels, <laughs> Katie, that, <laughs> that one, I did that myself when I was lecturing. And I think it's when, it's like being in fight mode. It's like yeah. war mode. So my my clothes were in absolute armor when I was lecturing. Gotcha. So I was like, you just try. <laughs> The, the clothes say, don't even try before they try, yes. if that makes sense. Yeah, and so, you put on this front, don't you? You're massive, almost like aggressive. Like, and yeah, it's like, don't even try. So your clothes kind of say it for you. Yeah. So I know you think like that that version of you was stronger, but you're probably stronger now because you can yeah. still bring that without the armour. Without the armour, but, uh -huh. but being a bit more vulnerable. Exactly. Being a bit more honest, reaching out to people a lot more, yeah. which is something I never used to do. I just used to suffer in silence, yeah. maybe talk to my husband, but you know, I, I was suffering on Friday and then I remembered that I now have lots of female friends yes. in the creative industries. Mm -hmm. And I was like, right, I'm going to ring somebody, I don't know, who did I ring? I rang Sarah Boris and oh, I said, nice. right, Sarah, can we have a chat? <laughs> Do you know, my, my stupid Apple Watch, it keeps like saying, oh, it says, I don't know who did I ring a ring Sarah Boris. <laughs> it did it in my last podcast as well. And I said to the guest, I said, I might leave it in because it's quite amusing. It is every time. But we spoke for two hours and I said to her at the end and she needed to chat as well. I, I, you know, it wasn't just a selfish, you know, <laughs> 
you Talk. know, <laughs> yeah, become a drainer rather than a radiator type thing. It was really lovely to chat because we just reminded each other that mm-hmm. actually we we are in an industry that can sometimes feel very unwelcome. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you forget that you have got, you know, a shared experience of that. And it's just you know keeping each other sane and then I actually I rang Danny as well oh, yeah, um, yeah. well actually I didn't ring her until um last night because she was in London she was in London all of last week she's yes. having a great time so we had a nice little chat as well and it was it just reminds you to reach out and talk Ex- to other people and know that you're not alone exactly and I think it was when I was messaging I think when I messaged you I was just like yeah we could just we could just meet for a chat yeah. it's just nice it is just nice and you, like you say the industry I was in I mean this industry of public art is still quite male dominated, but I think my algorithm is really filtered towards female artists. So I see a lot of them because I'm always searching what other women are doing this? What other, and what other women of color are doing this? That's an even smaller part of the algorithm. Yeah. So I really, I look for that. So I do see a lot of women in the industry, but largely when you're out there, it's quite male dominated. Yes. So it is nice to just remind yourself oh I do have female friends in this industry I do have that and they they understand this bit and that so it is nice because before I was in a hugely male dominated space same yeah hugely. yeah and you find yourself (laughs) having to adapt to it become one of the lads you know (laughs) (laughs) I I was just severely stern was like stern but still nice but not too nice because don't take the mick you know that kind of thing. yes mm-hmm. I mean like men are great you know sometimes you can you, you appreciate them for their kind of um their kind of simplicity I suppose mm-hmm. not that I'm saying men are simple <laughs> put yourself saying, right out there oh on that God, one <laughs> I'm gonna get I'm gonna get cancelled <laughs> that's brilliant <laughs> it's like, you no, know what I mean I do you know because because you know, they're just like, oh, you yeah, watch one for lunch. Yeah, right. yeah uh, very you know, direct, just very just like down yeah, to earth, you know, space. fun. And I'm not suggesting women are complicated creatures. See, I think we are. Right, I think okay. we are quite complicated. <laughs> We're I emotional, say, I think. Yeah, emotionally complicated, and that's okay. Yeah, there has totally. to be a balance. Yeah. <laughs> See, I'm, this is the thing. I'm still trying to find ways to sort of talk about all of these things and it's it's like stuff we don't really normally talk about no, is it it's been no, a we don't. crazy couple of years <laughs> it has been it has and everyone's kind of creep creeping out of it but forgetting that we are all going to be a bit changed by the past two years oh, i think yeah. people are forgetting that it's like it's okay to view things differently to want yeah. to approach things differently definitely it's all right that's the positive to come yes. out of it you know, there's been a lot of change, but that's great. Yes. And and now um, I think some of us are still in shock. So it's also about, I think, remembering that it's okay if you're feeling tired. Exactly. If you're kind of not creative at the moment or things aren't going right for you. I mean, remember, we've just gone through a global pandemic. There's a whole heap. And before that, there was Brexit. So we didn't even get yeah. a chance to digest that before everything went on. So there's a lot of change that's happened. And yes. change can especially so dramatic, it can bring a lot of trauma, can't it? Yeah. I've been learning about trauma and the impact it can have on you. And I think that's something that isn't talked about a lot because anything can bring that on. And with what everyone's been through in the past like two years and probably still going through, that brings a lot of trauma Mm. with it. So I think it's important for people to be kind and patient with themselves and with others. Yeah, And with me, it's the other way around because you, you can be patient with others and then forget about yourself. Yes. So if you like that, be patient with yourself <laughs> as well. Just remember <laughs> just to take remember, a chill. Take a minute. Go to Loch Lomond. <laughs> just swim in a lot. Yeah. Safely, please. Safely. Goodness. Don't go into the deep end. Yeah. <laughs> We're taking a short break to get a word from our sponsor. Capture One creates world-class tools for editing, organising and working with photos. Want to test the software for yourself? Just use the code CREATIVEBOOM for 10% off or sign up for a 30-day free trial. Go to CaptureOne.com. Now, back to my chat with Vanessa. So you went freelance in 2015. Mm -hmm. You kind of left you haven't left creative education but you were you were um the you worked at Manchester College for quite a long time long time yeah and you were the course leader yeah so I was one of the course leaders there (coughs) for graphic design and then we had graphic design and advertising I still even remember the UCAS codes so (laughs) still like 
in there. In green, in green. green. Yeah, because I did all the uh, the interviews. So I was like the UCAS lady for our course. So I would read all the applications, interview all of the prospective students and all the things. So yeah, I loved it. I loved it. And it's it's nice to have had a positive impact on so many people. Yeah. And, you know, people still reach out to me from like their roles in industry now saying, I remember that lecture you did and I still use that in my career now. And, you know, that's, that's what I remember. It just makes me think, oh yeah, I'm, I'm not 20. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> time flies and then you realise that if you've been teaching that long, you're like, oh, okay, great. This means we're old. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But so, I'm a bit older than you, so you're okay. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Quite fab. a bit. You're fab. I don't think it's that much. Oh, as come much on. as you think. Come but, uh, <laughs> but it is nice to get those messages, you know, from people enjoying their creative career or, or just creative lives if they've not gone into that industry. So yeah. it's nice. Was it a diverse mix? In, oh gosh, I mean, it was so long. I I started off teaching sort of post-16, so sort of 16-year-olds straight out of school. And um, yeah, that some of those students still contact me now, which is, is, I just love it. And see them with their children and all of that. It's just so nice. They're like in their 30s now or whatever. Oh gosh. Yeah, exactly. So, or like late 20s. Sorry if I got that wrong. No. Can you imagine they're like, what? <laughs> no, Vanessa, no. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so so that, and then um, I worked at Jewish Seminary. So that was really interesting as well. Um, and then it was very diverse. Yeah. But there was a, it was quite male heavy, actually, some of the intake. But yeah. yeah, people from all over the world and from all different nationalities across the years that I was teaching. So yeah. So what was the tipping point that made you leave all that and then start out as a mural artist and a designer? So I feel like all of that was my journey as a mural artist designer is kind of, it was sort of there in the background, but there's a whole confidence story about that, which I think I have to tell after why I left. So <laughs> with with any kind of education, they always go through massive shifts and changes and they call them organisational changes or restructuring And there was a whole time where education was going through restructuring and a lot of people's jobs were at risk. Now, my role actually wasn't at risk, but I saw that as, okay, I'm at a time in my career now going through a few things in this organisation which weren't very pleasant. And I just thought I can either stay or I can use this time now to kind of just get back out there into industry because I always knew I wanted to go back into industry before teaching my students' children so, because in teaching, the years pass quick. And then before you know, it's like, oh, you're my teacher, but you taught my mom, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and I always knew before that happened, yes. I wanted to get back into industry. Right. So I saw this with these organizational changes, a lot of my colleagues losing their jobs. Um, like I said, mine wasn't at risk, but I thought, if I know I want to leave and explore, Maybe if I leave and explore, that gives a space for someone who isn't in a position to do that. Yeah. Because some of my colleagues were retirement age. They really didn't want to be losing their jobs then. No. And I was at a stage where I wanted to explore other things. So to me, that's making space. Yeah. And that is a win-win. Take up more space. Yeah, exactly. As Danny Danny, uh, Danny beautifully uh, types out. (laughs) (laughs) Love that types out. Yeah, so that was it. That was the, the tipping point. I just thought, yeah, okay, let's do this. Yes, <laughs> I love it. And now mm. it's 2022 nearly. Yeah. Oh yeah, because it was, it was at the time when I was doing my master's as well. So I think I was looking more at my own practice. And I remember one of the papers I wrote for my master's was thinking, hmm, how would I, how would I do this? What would, would I get burnt out? I never really got burnt out, to be fair, but I always knew that I was developing this desire to get back out there and develop my practice because I was a teacher from really not that long after graduating. Yeah. So in my early 20s. So I was kind of did a bit in industry, then straight into lecturing. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I was like a lecturer at 23, 24. So do you see what I mean? So That's I was like amazing. straight into it. And, you know, it is. And I never saw it. Like I never gave myself props for that, to be fair. I just kind of cracked on. Well, did do we it. give ourselves props for anything? No, no. We're rubbish, aren't We're we? really bad at that. <laughs> we have to improve, improve. Yeah, so I went straight into that. So I knew I wanted to get back because I enjoyed preparing everyone for industry. And I was like, yeah, I want to 
get out there now and, yeah. do, and do that again. And because you'd done it that way round, did you have a bit of a confidence crisis? Was there a bit of imposter syndrome or, or had you found the teaching experience to be actually the fuel to your flame and you knew what you were kind of doing really? Do you know what? I love teaching still and I do class it as my superpower because I know I'm good at it. And, and it's very few things I will say that to that confidently, but that I will say, I know I'm good at teaching because I really love helping people achieve and then when it's in a subject area, I'm like, yeah, let's do this. Let, let's do this. Let's get you there. Come on. Like, so I love doing that. And I have a real passion for creative education. So I'm confident in that. Where the crisis of confidence came was identifying myself as an artist. You don't know how long it took me to be able to say I'm an artist. I couldn't say it. I was like, mm, I'm a designer, I kind of do these things, I kind of do that. I just couldn't. Sort of running around. Running around, da, 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 da. I couldn't say it. Yeah. And that was, you know, it was never really instilled in me. Um, you know, it's kind of like artists for this group, you know, don't know what it is you do. So like for the <laughs> longest time, <laughs> that's not, you're not, you could basically, if you're not a fine artist, it was as though you're not an artist. And I was never a fine artist. Yeah. Or I didn't have confidence in that way. And in my school in education, it was like, um, I was discouraged from applying for certain universities. They'd say, you can't go there, you'll never get in. You can't do that. You're, you, yes, my education story is a whole other story by itself. Um, yeah, so there was never that kind of positivity thrown my way. And I think that knocked my confidence. But when I, um, eventually I could start calling myself an artist and it's really only very recently yeah <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like just say it just say it Vanessa yes I'm an artist do you know have what you, I mean? have it's you looked in the difficult. mirror and done it you know Vanessa you're an artist no do you know what I do though when people ask me instead of doing the all the way around the houses thing I'll be like yes I'm an artist I love it and I'll hold it there even as uncomfortable as it might feel yes and I do the same because I've been through a similar <laughs> journey and, and I think it's wonderful and I think we're wonderful and it, I think we're just awesome exactly and, and it's, it's, it's great it's and it's, great. it's something to be celebrated because you know when people will think it's hobby I'm like no I do this full time yes. and I hold it there and I'm like oh yes. the power of silence yeah just deliver it, <laughs> own it. So like, I suppose in any industry, there's always going to be a bit of a snobbery. There's a hierarchy, a social hierarchy. Mm -hmm. And so from your point of view, you mentioned fine artist. Yeah. And so you, in your head, whether whether it's, whether it's it exists or not, in mm -hmm. our heads, we probably think, oh, fine artist right up here. Exactly. You yeah, know, exhibitions at the Tate, you know, fantastic. So then that kind of brings in a little bit of imposter syndrome because you think, well, I'm not an artist, you mm -hmm. know, I'm, I haven't actually been doing it for very long, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. Scared of paintbrushes, yeah. <laughs> I used to go on, I used to go on press trips with, you know, journalists who worked at very uh, large newspapers or magazines and they were established and they worked um, for these these places and they were very respected and, and very smart, very clever, brilliant writers. Mm -hmm. And some of them just hated me because they saw me as an influencer or a blogger <laughs> that started this digital platform. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and I get it um, because at the time the industry was changing, you know, yeah. print was sort of dying mm -hmm. and digital was coming in. And at the time, I mean, my blog in comparison to these newspapers, even now is nothing <laughs> in comparison. I know my place, but you know, to not have, um, you know, to, to, to sort of belittle someone because they, um, haven't done a traditional route into something yes. or have dared to do something a bit different. So, you know, I, I don't know what I'm trying to say, really. I just think it's, I think it's so silly that we build up this kind of um, fear of not actually just coming out and saying what we are. Yes, exactly. And we can be anything. Yeah. And and I suppose a little bit of that fear comes from those, you know, expectations mm -hmm. and what is perceived, you know, oh, well, you can't be taken seriously if you haven't been to university or you can't be taken seriously if you haven't, you know, if you haven't rubbed shoulders with... <laughs> God, who, no, it's true. And who I think, else? And my my favorite thing is people used to, they almost used to throw it, throw this statement at me as though to check. So if I say I'm an artist, they'd be like, "Where can I see your work?" Is that what they do? Yes. Oh. Ew. So yeah. So as if to say, well, if you can't tell me, then you're not an artist. And I used to get that all the time, but it was so sweet when uh, they, <laughs> when they were like. Can I see your work anywhere? I'm like, yes, uh, if you're in the Trafford area, you can see it down the side of Trafford House, actually. Oh. Boom. 
I love it. Because whenever I walk and here, around. And there, and there. Yeah, yeah, it's great. And I walk around <laughs> Manchester and if I'm with somebody and we're doing a tour or they've come up from somewhere else, because it's nice when you live in the city because people come to you. And yes. Like, Let's go out into the city. And I'm like, oh, that's um, a mural over there by my friend Vanessa Scott. And they're like, <laughs> oh, is she a famous artist? And I go, Yes. Oh yes, she my is. God, that's so weird to say. I get that. I, people ask me that. I'm not comfortable with saying that. I just say well known. Well known. <laughs> I'm well known. <laughs> known. That's it. And that even Why? that's uncomfortable. I don't know. I don't it's great. know. It's really strange. But did you feel like, I don't know, has it only been a recent thing where you felt like that's been something that's come on? Like that you've been invited more to sit around more tables and that kind of thing. And would you say that's kind of like an influence of recent events? Yeah, I, 100%. <laughs> it's, it's definitely it's just changed and quite quickly actually. And, mm. and where I can see the difference is the people who are getting in touch with me. So it's international brands getting in touch with me now, right. as well as local. So that was a surprise. I was, I was like, oh, okay, all right. And your mindset has to change if that makes sense. So you, you're used to dealing with people who you might see when you're just in town kind of thing, still established people, still people yeah. to be respected in their industry, but we've got this kind of, we're all like Northern, we're all doing our stuff together. We're at the same events, did that kind of feel and, you know, a kind of community friends thing. But then when international brands get in touch with you, it's just a different kind of conversation because you kind that they, they only know what you tell them and what they see of you. So they haven't seen you at lots of events and know you're this kind of person or know you're that kind of person or, you, do you see what I mean? And totally get what you're saying. They're not like close to you in that way so then you have to make sure you present yourself properly into it's not that I don't but I can't there's no assumptions to be made mm -hmm. so they need to I need to show them how I work I need to show them how I communicate they might not know that I'm a strong communicator because of like all my teaching things they might not know that I can present what I do you know you mm. can't take things for granted yes. because I think as you're as you grow and develop in your career you can get comfortable and then all of a sudden it's like oh drop uh okay <laughs> I need to show up more and that might sound funny because I do always show up but it, it's just a different thing that you have to switch in yeah to play it for is. example my website I might be like oh it's okay everyone everyone just gets in touch with me on Instagram it's okay it's okay you know kind of like, <laughs> it's fine it's fine it's fine it's not a big deal everyone knows and then it's like no people are looking at your website yeah you need to you need to sort that out so that kind of comfort zone I've been swiftly kicked out of this year yeah because that's the thing people don't realize when they get into this there's, there's all this kind of constant reputation building that you need to yes, do non-stop and and Instagram your Instagram feed is just a <laughs> colorful dream <laughs> Um, <laughs> it, is, it is gorgeous. And then, and, and then one thing leads to another. This is the thing. Whenever I interview creatives who've mm -hmm. like made a success of themselves and have become a famous artist, international artist, and yes, we are allowed to say that Thank because you. I'm saying that. <laughs> Um, it's because there's just been this perfect storm of things that have happened and there's a tipping point at some point in mm -hmm. the career and then that leads to something else and then that leads to something else and then that leads to something else. It's and, very true. And it's just, it, it's just so satisfying. I mean, you ended up getting a Blue Peter badge. Yes. <laughs> I don't like you anymore. <laughs> How come you've got one and I do, haven't? Do you know what? <laughs> it was great to get the badge, but then it was even more surreal and exciting to design one of the badges. Oh, I know. So, and and to design it with Sky, um, she's fantastic. And that was that was a wild weekend. I was literally painting a mural in Halifax, um, which was there was storm, there was snow, there was sunshine. The mural was washed away three times, and I had to repaint it before My the gosh. peace hall reopened in like ten hours. It was intense. And right in the middle of that, I had to go into like a quiet room and do the VT yeah. to launch this badge. <laughs> It was just like... So you went on telly as well? Yeah, so so that was a film. They're like, so we're just going to get you to do this VT. So I was there like trying to get the snow off my face and trying <laughs> to look like really presentable. I'm sure you look gorgeous. And then thank you. <laughs> and then just be like, hi, Sky. So here's the concept for the badge. <laughs> So that was, you were great. I've got to look at really that clip fun. now. Yeah, the clip is there. It's there. And I was like, yeah. Then you went back out into the snow. <laughs> <laughs> this 
to. <laughs> this is going to be one of my questions because it must be really hard work with the elements, the wind, the rain, and like being up on a ladder, being <laughs> painting the wo- <laughs> the UK's <laughs> tallest, tallest mural. One. My goodness, like how do you do it? Do you know I I have a lot of energy in general. I think I don't know. I've always done many things at once, and actually since lockdown over the past two years, what I've done is refined what I focus on because I've, I've always been a person doing lots of things. And I thought, okay, if I just, and it's not easy this, but I'm always like, if I focus down on this, then I can maybe go more in depth with it yes. rather than lots of things on a shallow level. Yeah. So I've, it looks like I'm doing loads and I am, but it's still less than what I used to do because I want to get a depth and I want to develop my practice more yes. so I think in terms of battling the elements I just love it I love being outside <laughs> I love paint I love I, li- <laughs> I love the text message I got you from you the other day and it was just like a, a photo full like it was what was it like a it trolley was my, full of- my, my folding trolley which is an essential thing it oh folds God. small car folds small opens out big and I'd just come back from a massive shopping spree in town <laughs> of like spray paint I had like 50 odd cans and I was like, yeah, hi, hi, Katie. Yeah, I'm just here. There's a picture. <laughs> this is what I'm surrounded by. Yeah. And I was like wheeling it through town, rattling on the cobbles. To do another mural. To do another mural, yeah. Because you've just done one for, um, was it Black History Month um, at yes. home, Manchester? How yeah. wonderful is that? And that was based on Mankara Jack. Yeah, so Mankara Jack. Oh, Mankara is, Jack, Yeah, Sorry. Mankara uh, Jack is, um, you know, when you're given time to develop your practice, you really fantastic things can happen. And I was given the opportunity through Elevate, which is like an artist residency program. And I was the first artist in residence there. And it was at Stratford Public Hall. And I was given chance to actually explore my practice. I've always wanted to do a residency and I got to do one. And on that residency, I just discovered more my love for pattern and print. I always knew I loved it, but I never explored it. And then I started developing a series called Mankara's which are based on African Ankara prints. Right. But obviously Mankara, because I designed them in Manchester. Oh, I see. Oh, I love it. You see? <laughs> Genius. <laughs> and I just used them as a way to comment on some of the experiences I had. And this was around, you know, experiences with Black Lives Matter, learning about words like microaggression, which I had experienced a lot, but I didn't know it had a term. Right. So it was a colourful, wonderful visually exciting way to talk about some really dark, tough things yeah. that I'd experienced um, throughout my career, more my career than my life, to be honest, because in my life, I'm surrounded by a really loving family, um, which is very fortunate. But in my career, it's not always been that supportive mm. and really quite dark and nasty at some times. So talking about microaggressions, you know, there's been times when I've had to put a colleague in between me because another colleague was going for me physically. What? You know, that's and that not was, micro. And thank you. You see, <laughs> and someone said that to me because to me, I was like, oh, microaggression. They were like, Vanessa, what you're describing sounds like aggression, aggression. But it was minimalized or minimized. So to me, I thought, oh, it's nothing. What on earth had you done? Did you did you sort of say I'm a better artist than you? No, I mean, I did achieve. <laughs> I mean, I'm not trying to. I'm person. not trying to no. make light or kind of. No, no, no. I did just... achieve. I was. I was successful in my role, and it did irritate people because you always get right. people who are irritated by people being successful. Mm. And just for some reason, this individual didn't really take to me. And uh, yeah, they just expressed it in that way. But was it a woman or a man? It was man? a guy. It was oh, a man. Okay. And I had no support. No one supported me. They all turned against me, actually. And Oh, God, that's horrible. Yeah, Vanessa. and it wasn't nice. And those the, those are the things Office that... Office politics. Yeah, it was very political. And I just was like, right. So I always felt like I was wrong. It's like there's a herd of sheep and you're the one that's been bitten by the yes, wolf. It, and everybody just turns the back on you and moves away. You know, like the film The Beach. Yeah. When, the, when the kid, the lovely uh, the lovely gentle couple get bitten by a shark and yeah, they all just like, oh, leave no, them to just die on the beach. Because we that's, don't want 
want to get bitten. No, no, it's because they don't want it to ruin their kind of oh. happy mood. So they're like, oh, just sorry if nobody's read the beach or watched the beach. I've just ruined the film for them. But yeah, that's that's that oh. awful aspect of human nature where people just like, yeah. It was intense. It was definitely, they just should They don't want to be tainted by your kind of, you know, Yeah, I can experience. see that. Exactly. And so that was tough, but it was with the uh, the Black Lives Matter sort of uprising, these conversations were starting to be had. Yeah. And it was being had whilst I was having this residency. So it was bringing up so many experiences. And I was like, oh, so that's what that was. And that was not okay. And okay, so that was institutionalised racism. And so, do you know what I mean? So it was making me just face these things again. Mm. So... I just put that into my art and then I developed the series of patterns called Mankaras. And I use words in them, I use pattern, I use image to tell story. And then for the home mural, I developed three, three pieces which talk about the impact of black people on like the UK yeah. and how they've helped build the UK in, in positive ways and so on. Yeah. And then I use the language of the Union Jack to to be like the, the house for it all. Oh, it's so that's so nice. why it's called Mankara Jack. Oh, it's so it's so <laughs> lovely. It's positive, it's inclusive. And exactly. it's, it's taking something that you've experienced, but turning it into something hopefully that represents change. Yeah, exactly. And uh, change for the good. And hopefully, you know, these conversations will be um, continued and the, yeah. the things that you've experienced, a thing of the past. Yeah, I hope so, because they weren't pleasant. And I think I wanted it to be monumental. When I looked at the opportunity I had there for such, it's a massive space, lots of people use it. It was going to make an impact and I wanted it to make an impact. I was like, if this has never been done before, then I want to make sure I do it right because I'm representing people who might want to see their voice represented, who might not get this chance. So I want to do them proud. And yeah. that's why I was like, I want to do them proud. So I was like, let's do it. <laughs> let's do it bright. <laughs> <laughs> With loads of colour. Yeah. And I thought, oh. you know, it could be controversial, but if they're why, okay though? with that. No, I disagree. Why? why Some do you people say get very emotional. You know, it's the Union Jack. You can't do that. You can't, you can't put like An Ankara or African inspired prints on the Union. I know, but not everyone is as fantastic as you. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> thanks. Yeah, not everyone has that mindset. And I was bracing myself for the hate, you know, like I was defacing the flag. I was bracing myself, but home were fantastic commissioners and they were like, do it then. Just, I was like, are you okay with this concept? They're like, yes. I was like, great. Fab. It's great Let's when you get it. that artistic freedom to just do what you want. That's brilliant. Yeah. Because I'm doing this shop at the moment, um, which I've just launched. And, um, you know, people will say to me when I've approached them and we're going to talk about doing something, they're like, you know, is there any brief? Do you want me to do anything or is it completely free? And I'm like, just do whatever you want. Ooh, <laughs> I can't guarantee cool. that, you know, I'll be able to sell a lot of prints for you. <laughs> We're doing pretty well on our launch week, but you know. <laughs> oh, that's so exciting. Oh, it's just so nice. I think... When we're allowed the space to breathe and just create and mm -hmm. do something that maybe we've been thinking about recently or, you know, something that we want to explore, you exactly. know, some, some great things can come out of that. They do, 100%. And like I said, that series started uh, when I got the residency opportunity. I took it to Bristol and did my first Mankara mural. That was like a really huge wall. And then I was able to bring that in to the piece at home. So now I, I'm just excited to develop it more and see what else I can do with it. And then, yeah, Ooh, see where it can go. I can't wait. Well, maybe we need to have a chat after this. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. So when you um, went freelance, you also launched this amazing nonprofit, which basically uses art to help people who are in, you know, disadvantaged situations, um, ex-offenders, mm -hmm. prisoners, and you take your workshops in and, and you yes. just kind of, you, you you kind of take your other passion, which is education yeah. to help others. That must be humbling. Yeah. So the, the story of 731 is, it's really, it's a story of sisters again. <laughs> So my sister Venice was in the prison service teaching uh, in a creative sort of area. And she was like, well, you know, unfortunately, some people go into it for financial and they're not about people. Right. Whereas we're about people. Yeah. So she was like, this could be done better because we're about people. So then she started like freelancing there. And then at the time when I left, part of the reason why I left was like, let's do this. Let's take this further together. 
So then we sort of wrote all of the, I don't get too educationally, but basically we wrote things so that we could become an accredited centre and offer accredited qualifications to um, the the guys inside. So to Mm. the people serving a sentence or on remand. So I used my skills in education to write qualifications. She used her experience working in prisons and we brought that together. And then the business was able to just keep going and it's still going. She does that more or less full time. And then I go in and do projects based on my expertise. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and, and what's the feedback there? Because it just must be so grounding to go in and, you know, when you're having a bad day or kind of, you know, I'm, I'm talking very selfishly now. You're not, you're not <laughs> obviously doing it for yourself, no. but it must just be very grounding to work with these people and remember just how lucky we all are. Do you know, when you work in prisons or, or just the criminal justice sector or custodial workshops or anything like that. It's a whole different world in and of itself. There's different rules. There's different things you can and can't do. Obviously just access to resources is different, you know, and for me, it's about one of the biggest problems in our justice system is what it's a great word. It's recidivism, which Mm. may, uh, I know. (laughs) <laughs> that's a sexy word it's a great word I don't know what it means recidivism, but... recidivism. so it basically just means reoffending. Oh. so when you I know but isn't recidivism a better it's word it's a beautiful word it, for, a, for, for the very, English language yeah exactly <laughs> and it basically means when you are released out of prison you've served your sentence that there's no opportunities or that you're faced with a lot of prejudice yeah. or you're released right back into the middle of the nonsense that you were sent down for in the first place yeah and you know, people get into that lifestyle. Some people really want to be there and they want to be there. Yeah. All right. That's your choice. <laughs> okay. Totally is. But also some people it's upbringing. It's a lack of understanding or knowledge that there are other choices. Like if yeah. you are brought up and like your, your mom, your dad, your uncles, your, these are all in that kind of criminal mindset and lifestyle. Can you actually blame someone for naturally going down that route? I'm not saying that some of the things that people do are great. This is, I'm not an advocate no, for crime. Not. I'm just saying some people want a chance or they might not have been exposed to a positive role model or opportunity, you know. So with recidivism, it's basically people go out, they serve their sentence, but they go back out into a world that isn't welcoming to them, mm. that it's completely changed from when they went in. Yeah. They might not have the skills to actually get a job because people outside can struggle. And then there's a lot of prejudice. Yeah. So they end up re-offending. So you've had the compassion and kindness to realise that these people are human, Mm -hmm. that the forgiveness is a thing. Yes, it is. (laughs) (laughs) And people serve their time. Yeah. So why can't they be reintegrated and and enjoy a sort of, you know, peaceful, happy life? Exactly. Out out in the real world. And if art can save the day, then... Then, yes. That's just wonderful. It is. And... I think it's just the empowerment of going in and being like, okay, yeah, this is this is not where I want to be. I don't want to keep doing this. But then going out knowing now I've got this set of skills, now I've got these techniques and strategies on on how to be a freelancer, how to be a business owner, how to really develop myself and try and be a self-starter, then, you know, that's great. And that's what we try and offer. And something I'd love to tell you about, if I can. Yeah, of course. Is... In prison, there's um, a real lack of hair care, like Afro hair care. Right. So we've recently launched something called the Afropod, and it focuses on providing hair care and styling services for uh, prisoners with Afro hair. Because Afro hair is seen as specialist and difficult and weird. Yeah, so it's not catered for. So we started (sighs) that. I bring on black barbers um, or people who specialise in Afro hair, Some have even been in prison themselves and now they've turned their life around as a barber. And we go in and we offer this service and uh, just talk to them about like the positivity of, you know, those skills. So I'm really proud of that. That is incredible. Do you you ever sleep? Is there any... Do you know? No. (laughs) Because this is just... something I'm working on. (laughs) We're literally just scratching the surface here, aren't we? Honestly, that's something I'm working on. Average four hours. No, it's sometimes five. (laughs) 
you know what? I'm probably the same. I think we're quite similar in mm-hmm. our kind of, you know, we have a passion for doing stuff and being creative. And exactly. Like I'll wake up in the morning and even if I've only had like four hours, five hours, I'll be like, right, what am I going to do today? Mm-hmm. And I'll start like preparing and then I'll go to the desk sometimes without having the first cup of tea. Yes, and I'm just I do that. determined. It's bad, I do, isn't it? that is bad. I'll really just bad. like hammer out some emails like before eight. Yeah. Then I'll have a cup of tea. Then I'll relax and then I'll yes. get in the shower and get ready. See? And- <laughs> That's what I <laughs> What are we bad? What are we like? <laughs> this is not good. We need to no. like... Maybe we need to go on a spa day together. I know. I, I started now to try and start my day because I, I, I'm a Christian. So I always, I, I think, okay, let me at least just read a scripture or something like, or just have a minute of meditation before. Yeah. And that helps me just not just dive straight into go, 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 you know. So. I do wonder if that is something to do with religion. Because like I, <laughs> I grew up in a religious family. Like my really? nana was a Catholic. She was oh. a nun at one point. Really? Oh yes. My gosh. She was literally the real life Maria. Oh. Um, and ended up leaving the uh, um, the ministry wherever she was. I don't know where she was. Yeah. And, and met my grandpa and the rest is history. Oh. But she grew up with this very caring, kind of very Christian Catholic mm-hmm. kind of way of being. So that was instilled in us so I guess that's where you and I both get it from yeah. we're just constantly like doing out, stuff out, out. Give, give. Yeah. give 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 let's just be amazing but you do have to you do have to give to yourself as well and take a minute that's yes. what I've learned you do and when I'm in those stressful moments sometimes I just say to Tom even though I'm not practicing religion anymore yes. I always say to him I'll go to heaven <laughs> See now, now you're turning into your mom. I am, and that is my that is my ego a little bit. You know, oh, like, I love it. Oh, you know, at least I'll. Oh, what's the other thing I always say? Oh, well, at least I can be proud on my deathbed. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's hilarious. What are we like? What are we like? Oh. So fantastic. you're obviously a positive force. You've you've survived what has been a very difficult couple of years, mm-hmm. and now you're absolutely adamant that you're an artist. You're yes. finding your voice, and it's all. It's all go from here, isn't it, really? Yes. I, you know, I'm, I'm really thankful and I, I take each day and each opportunity as it is. I just am really excited about these things. And, and now I'm saying I'm excited. I'm not being scared to say it as though people think, oh, my God, you're so full of yourself. Or, oh, my gosh, you're so this. You know, I used to think, I'm not, I'm not. I'm just really excited. So now rather than being so apologetic, yeah. now I'm just saying, yeah, I'm excited. And, you know, anyone can approach me chat to me I like helping people so if I can be like that then I can be proud of myself as well so that's what I'm learning yeah (laughs) brilliant okay well thank you so much for your time Vanessa thank you it was lovely to finally do this I know it was great thank you (laughs) to find out more about Vanessa Scott go to our show notes at creativebeam.com forward slash podcast Thanks again to our sponsor, Capture One, one of the most powerful photo editing softwares out there. Use Creative Boom for a 10% discount or sign up for a free 30-day trial at captureone.com. And thank you for joining us on this third season. We'll be back for another dose of candid conversations with creatives very soon. But until then, take care and I hope you get some rest over the festive break.